So I made this dress many, many years ago, and I loved how it fit, but it was meant for just a photo shoot, and I made it out of very poor quality fabric, and so I just decided someday I will make the same exact dress, but out of better quality fabric. And that was, as I said, many, many years ago. And I'm actually thinking that today might be Sunday. So this is the dress. I pulled it out of storage and was hoping, hoping that it will still sort of fit so that I can deconstruct it and use it as a pattern to save some time and effort. I don't have high hopes though since it was so long ago, but I'm going to try it on and see if it fits. And if it does, then I will deconstruct it. And I'm thinking probably that I'm going to make it out of some white fabric, but we'll see. The first step to do is try it on, so here we go. I was really surprised this still fit, and I could even zip it up. And so I set to work deconstructing the dress, which involved a lot of tedious seam ripping of teeny, tiny seams that I will not make you watch. But I will allow you to share in this very satisfying moment. After I pulled apart those pieces, I gave them a nice press and lint rolled away all of the threads until my lint roller looked like a Jackson Pollock painting. This is what all the deconstructed pieces look like. I laid them out to get a general idea of how much fabric I would need and then I went shopping in my stash of fabric. I used an old bed sheet to modify the bodice pieces. I cut out the pieces and then threw them up onto the dress form and pinched and pinned and marked here and there until I was satisfied. Or so I thought. Because here I am explaining that I've decided to change from darts to princess seams. So that's what I did. And I'm really glad that I did too because it may seem like an insignificant change, but I think it looks way better with princess seams. Okay, it is going well. I feel like I have made some progress. The next step is to try it on me, and to get the most accurate fit, first I have to go eat something. After that, I tried it on myself, made a few mental notes, made some alterations, and then semi-finalized the pattern. It's another day. The next step, since I have my pattern pieces made, the next step is to make a muslin and then make any changes that I might need to make on the pattern, and then I'll be ready to cut out the actual fabric. So I set to work making that muslin, out of an old bed sheet once again, but this time in a more similar color to the fabric I would be using to give myself a better visual. I tried on the muslin and everything seemed to fit perfectly except for one thing, even though Anne Shirley would be proud to wear such sleeves, I am sure they were just a bit too poofy for my taste, so I ended up altering them just a little bit. And then it was time to cut out the skirt pieces. This is what I used for the skirt lining, and I ended up having just enough. This is what those pieces looked like. And then I couldn't fit the actual skirt pieces all into one shot since there were so many of them and they were so big, but this is what they looked like. After cutting out the skirt, I set to work cutting out the bodice pieces. I cut out three layers of the front, the side front, and the back. One layer of the actual fabric, one layer of cotton, to use as a sort of a stabilizer since I didn't have any interfacing, and one layer to use as lining. I cut out just two layers of fabric for the cuff, and just one for the sleeve since I wanted it to be really light and airy. 
And here's what all of those pattern pieces looked like. The next day, I speedily sent all the skirt panels through the sewing machine and then the serger to finish the edges off nicely. This is what the skirt lining looked like. And that's what the actual skirt looked like. I set the skirt aside for a moment and focused on the bodice. I made sure to lint roll it because if you've never found a little piece of thread in between the layers of your sewing project after you've finished, I'm very glad for you. It's very disheartening. I gave them both a good press and pinned them together. I know this is an extra step as opposed to using fusible interfacing, but I actually do prefer this look, so I don't mind the extra step. And then I sewed all the pieces together, front to side front, side front to back, on both the bodice and the bodice lining. And right about now would normally be the time for clipping some curves. But I like to live on the edge, so I send mine through the serger, dangerously close to the seam. Skydiving, schmidiving, am I right? This is the real adrenaline rush. And this is the end result. Give it a good press, and there it is. Nice and neat and tidy. Okay, what am I doing now? No, seriously, what am I doing? Oh, I'm sewing the bodice and the bodice lining together at the neckline. Then it was finally time to gather up the sleeves, right along the top edge and the bottom edge. I pinned the bottom edge of the sleeve to the cuff, at the center, and at both ends. And then I just pulled up the gathers to fit. I just shimmied around the gathers until they were nice and even, put a bunch of pins in it until it looked like this. And then I machine stitched right along the edge until it looked like this. I then turned the cuff inside out and hand stitched it into place. And there's the inside of the cuff. And the outside. For closures, I elected to use skirt clasps instead of buttons because that's what I had on hand and it worked pretty well. I attached the sleeves to the shoulder in much the same manner, pulled up the gathers to fit, pinned it, and then stitched it into place. I enclosed the raw edges of the sleeve by use of some machine stitching and some hand stitching both. And here I do clip some curves. I would not be running the serger over this area. Too dangerous. You've got to draw the line somewhere. Just like that, skirt gathering time was upon me. I ran the gathering stitch along the entire length of the skirt waistline, and then pinned it to the bodice, matching the seams. Basically, just like the sleeves. Pinned it into place, and then pulled up the gathers to fit. Pin and pull, pin and pull shimmy the gathers to be nice and even, and then add a ton more pins. And then I stitch that all into place with my sewing machine. Zipper time! I stitch the zipper in using an invisible zipper foot. 
time to hem this skirt. It's actually the perfect length. I don't have to cut any off. But it's not so long that I'll trip over it. To hem the skirt, I began by stitching a line at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I then took it over to the ironing board, and using that stitching line as a guide, I gave it a good press with my iron all the way around, and then turned it under again the same amount, gave it another press, and then used my sewing machine on a straight stitch to finish it off. And with that, the dress was finished. But I think I need a different setting to show you how it turned out. So glad to finally have this dress finished after so many years of wanting to make it it feels pretty good and it was really neat to open up an old project and see how I used to sew versus how I sew now I can often feel as though I am NOT improving in my abilities at all and I do know that I am it's just hard to see sometimes since it's such a gradual process so to anyone who makes things i highly recommend going back to an old project and recreating it to see how far you've come because this feels pretty encouraging